Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I'm gonna be expanding on the last video I made, showing you how you can add authentication into a Chrome extension using Superbase. So here you can see on my screen, a uh, example manifest file for a Chrome extension set up for using Superbase. Now in this example here, it's a new tab extension, and this is using the Chrome manifest version two, because when I was putting this together and checking at the moment, you can't use Superbase with manifest version three, I've contacted them about this and I'll update the description on this video if that changes, but at the moment, um, just because of the way that service workers work, um, this can't be done just yet, but I'm sure it's something they'll be adding um, very soon. So for manifest version two, this is all you need to have. So again, this is a new tab extension. So you can see we have the Chrome URL overrides for our new tab just here. Our content security policy, again, because this is version two, we need to have that. Um, and all we need to do is add in the, uh, the ID of our Superbase project into here, which you get when you set up your project. And that is all we really need here for our manifest file. Obviously we have our background page set up just here. So if we look at our background page, you can see that all we really do is include Superbase, and this could either be um, remotely hosted, because it's version two, you're allowed to do that. But what I like to do here, because in version three, you have to do this anyway, it's a good habit to get into. So you download the uh, external uh, libraries that you need to use and just have this in your folder. So you can see here's mine just here. And I just include it like that. Now the actual uh, file I'm getting, I'll put it in the description, um, but it's the one that's mentioned from the Superbase GitHub uh, repository of where you can actually find these files. So I just downloaded it from there and added it into the project. And after that, you can see I just have my, my background JavaScript page. So if we open that one up next, you can get an idea of how this all connects up. Okay, so at the top here, you can see we have our, our key and our URL. You might wanna secure this somewhere else. I'd have it on a, um, and create a Lambda function that you can call just from your Chrome extension that will return uh, these IDs. Um, but again, that's where we have this just here. And you can find on the Superbase channel, they have more information on these keys and the different permissions you can give to, to your keys here. So I'd recommend taking a look at that. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Um, but otherwise you can see, we just create our client just here, we set this all up, and then we have message events. Now, these work slightly differently with Superbase than um, on my videos with Firebase before, um, just because of the way that the, the SDK is set up. So I'll show you how that works down here. So what we have, instead of before, we have our on message listeners, where if you get events sent to you from your, your content script, or in this case, our new tab extension, and that sends events to our background page, you wanna listen for those, which is what we're doing down here. So we'll just move this down a little bit. Um, so we've got our event listener just here, but anytime we get a, a message sent through to us, we wanna handle it just here. So we have this separate um, handle message event. And because the SDK here uses a sync and await, um, we just have to change it to use this extra function. So that up here, as you can see, it's an async function because you can't put that directly into the on message listener event. So this is just an extra step just to facilitate that so you can have it um, work that way. And then up here, it works exactly as you would normally expect for these listeners. So we just have, uh, so we have the different checks here. So this command is log out. This command here just checks the state of that logged in user. We have one here to log in a user and sign up a user. So I'll show you how the extension looks in a moment but the actual parts of the library that we're using here, so you can see we have this code just here that's logging in our user. So we're again, we're using a wait just here, which is why we need to have that separate step with a sync and have that different function. And so we grab the information that we pass through. I'll show you that in a second as well. Pass it to Superbase auth sign in, and then wait for our response. So if we have our user, we send the response with our user. If we don't, we pass back the error. Exactly the same for sign up, it just changed sign in for sign up and you get the response just here as well. And for checking the auth, you just check the auth of the user just here. If they're there, you send it back. If they're not, pass back an error. And for log out, we just run Superbase auth sign out. So again, that's all fairly straightforward. I'll just quickly show you the, uh, the auth page where we actually send these events. So here is my new tab, so again, Pretty basic, it's exactly the same code with a few modifications that I made for my Firebase auth video. So if you want, you can compare these directly and see which one will work best for you. But as you can see down here, we have our, our authorized 
area, well, our authorized area just here, and our not logged in area, so this is where you can sign up and log in. And this includes our auth.js just here. Again, I'll share the code for this in the description as well. And if you look on the auth page, you can see how we just send messages to our background page. So if we want to take our sign up function, for example, you can see we grab the email and the password from the input fields, and we literally just send a message uh, just here to our background page with the command sign up user, and then we pass in the email and password and just wait for a response. Once we get our response, we check if this was a success. If it is, we uh, change to a logged in area and we put the uh, user's user ID that's generated by Superbase into the page just there. So it's really simple once you get a hang of it and you can do it that way. Now this will also work for the actual um, database fetching. So if you want to use the Superbase database as well, rather than just authorization, you will just update in here, add a new message. So say add message command, it could be fetch um, questions. Say so you have like a bunch of questions in your database and then you could then run that command in there as well. And you can find all of this on the Superbase docs. So for example, as I mentioned in the last video, when you go to API, because I created this example table, I know what the code is I need to use right away without even having to look at the particular parts of the docs, they make it all for you. So say I want to uh, select all the data from this database, I can just write in this code just here, paste it in there, like this, this is a really quick example again, but um, you can see this, I'd have to double check if that would work like that. But you might need to put that in into quotes like this. And then you just have to say, uh, so we've got our response just here. So we check if data, and then we could start to pass back our response. We put data like that. And then you could fetch the data just here. So again, it's really easy. The documentation is, is one of the best I've seen in terms of it updates with you. Almost as good as Stripe, so I'd say, which is probably up there for the best documentation around. But anyway, that's another matter altogether. But that is how you can uh, put this together really quickly into a Chrome extension using Superbase. And as I mentioned, this is for Manifest version 2, but hopefully Manifest version 3 will be supported really soon as well. It just comes down to XML HTTP request, um, a, similar function, a, a similar problem to what we have with Firebase Firestore. So Firebase real-time database works, but Firestore has an issue at the minute, and I've made another video on that um, on the service workers uh, with Firebase. Um, but again, this would be what you'd need to do to get it to work with manifest version three. Um, so again, we have a service worker instead um, and it's very, very similar. It's just a service worker. So we import via, import Superbase up here and have a try block and manifest is a bit different. We don't need the content security policy. Um, we just have our service worker and new tab. But again, I'll come back to that one in the future. Um, I'll update the description and a new comment on this video and show you that that's, that can work now, but at the moment it can't. Um, but again, that's how that works just there. And the extension itself looks like this. So if I wanted to create a new user, so there we go, I've created an account just here. I click sign up and you can see I'm now logged in. If I can make a new tab, it keeps that user logged in and there's my user ID. So if I go to my Superbase uh, users, you can see there's my account I've created just now and there's my user ID. So that's how quickly you can get started using Superbase authorization and the actual database side within a Chrome extension in, I don't know how long has it been, 10 minutes. So it's really easy to set this up, add it into your extension and then use all the power of Superbase straight there from your Chrome extension. If you've got any questions on how I set this up or how you may be able to do this using Manifest version 3, feel free to uh, drop a comment on this video, send me an email, just get in touch and I'll try my best to help. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.